Well, first of all, both the watts and the panel bar are used to locate an axle. Uh, when, you, when you don't have splayed control arms, uh, you need something to locate the axle from going back and forth. A watts link and a panel bar do the same thing, although they do it differently. The watts link has a belt crank that kind of pivots and keeps the axle located. It's going up and down. The panel bar has it kind of cut across and it keeps the uh, axle uh, uh, centered that way. And the big difference, and the reason I don't use a watts link, even as that the watts link is actually the best way to locate an axle, where the pivot point is on the watts link is where the rear roll center is. And on watts links, they're typically about the same as where the stock. Uh, panel bar location is like pretty much right across the middle of the axle. And I don't like the roll centers up that high. I like the roll center down low because the roll center is the point of the, oh, that the back of the car wants to roll around. And with a stock Mustang going around the corner, you really hard. You can kind of feel that inside, inside wheel kind of want to lift up a little bit and get light. That's because the roll center is high. You move that roll center down and it's not going to roll up as much. And on the panner bar, wherever the panner bar crosses the center line of the car, that's where the roll center is. So the watts link with the pivot is kind of like you can't really, because the bell cranks, you can't really move that down very far. Uh, but back in the old Trans Am days in the late 90s, what we used to do is we used to take a watts link and we'd mount it horizontal to the bottom of the differential. And that was easy to do because you've got the, the chassis axle runs underneath the, uh, the, uh, the rear axle. Uh, so that it was easy to put a watts link on the bottom and then go off and, and pick up the chassis. Uh, and that way you've got the benefits of a watts link, but you also put the roll center at the bottom of the differential. That's a little difficult for people to do in their garage. In fact, we did we did we did that we actually did that back in about 2001 or two. Uh, we made a setup where we used the uh, actually used the the, uh, the bell crank off of a Crown Vic. And he said just that was something that you know people just couldn't do in the garage. So we went to the other best way to do it. And we have like in our rear grip kit for S197s, which is the rear suspension package, it's called a uh, roll center relocation kit. And we actually have bracketry where we take the panter bar, we move it all the way down to the bottom of the differential, just like we did in the Trans Am cars, which is about as low as you can get it on a live axle car. And that makes a huge difference by Bring the rear roll center down and with our, our front grip kit which is the you know the k-member control arms and stuff we'll talk about that more at length in, in the five-day class we bring the front roll center up so that the car when it goes through a corner doesn't want to roll up when the roll center is high as you go through a corner you're not also not feeling that left or the inside tire getting light you're also feeling the opposite front tire start to dig in and push and it's getting it's getting over overloaded so I bring the front roll center down, the rear roll or front roll center up, rear roll center down. The car doesn't want to roll as much, which means with the geometry we've got in the rear grip kit, you actually get to the throttle before the apex. Okay, so the car isn't rolling as much, so you don't have to wait for the axle to settle. That's when the roll center is up. You're going around the corner. You have to wait for the axle to settle to get to the gas because if you get to the gas too soon, whoop, it's that old that oversteer thing. You're going to hit the fence with, with the back of the car. But with the roll center down, the car doesn't want to roll up as much. So you're a little flatter through mid corner so you get to the gas sooner and you get a better launch off the corner. So watts links, I mean, watts links are great if they're used on the bottom of the differential, but otherwise, um, you know, there, there's, I, I go with a panner bar because it's simple. Uh, there's something, you know, I'm, you know, what we'll be talking about uh, later in spring. I think it's gonna blow your mind when we get to that subject, but that, that's kind of where we are. And the whole rear grip kit, uh, we've got for the S197s is the upper controller module, the uh, lower control arms, the axle brackets, and the roll center kit. Every single piece has an impact on making a positive in, in, uh, uh, improvement in the geometry, which is why that these, these rear grip kit just is amazing. But we have the GT500 guys absolutely swear by it. Because anybody that's driven, driven, driven a GT500 with spirit, uh, knows uh, all about oversteer and uh, with a rear grip kit it, it's it, you know you can't take it away because of just so much torque in that motor but it just does an amazing job of settling down in the back of the car. <laughs>